love a sticky date pudding, especially in the winter. It's one of the desserts that I sort of crave or feel like the most. And just like with most of my dessert recipes, I've found a bit of a hack to make it a little bit better for you. So we're going to make a sticky date and chocolate pudding. So our sweetness is coming from the dates and from our sugar-free chocolate. And then with a uh, dairy-free toffee topping also from the dates. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually soften the dates and we're going to use the liquid from there to form a part of our wet ingredients. So I'm going to set that aside while we get the rest of our dry ingredients ready. So starting with some almond meal as our base, we're going to combine that with some buckwheat flour. So the buckwheat flour, sort of a pseudo grain. So this is gluten-free, but if you have sensitivities, you may like to use all almond flour. Then we have our raw cacao. So we're gonna have chocolate in, in two areas in here. And then we have our baking powder, our bicarb soda rather, not baking powder. This is where it gets a little bit different from most recipes. I'm going to use buttermilk and bicarb soda to give it the lift. So they have a chemical reaction that would usually be substituted by baking powder, which has both ingredients in there. So this is just our bicarb soda. And then I'm going to get a vanilla bean, slice it down the middle, scoop out all of those seeds there. I really, vanilla has got to be one of my favorite ingredients. Even when unnecessary, I tend to add it. <laughs> okay, so we've got our dry ingredients there. I'm just gonna loosely bring those together. Save us a little bit of work as we add our wet ingredients. Gonna create a little bit of a well in there. Gonna really loosely beat our eggs. So it doesn't have to be really thorough for eggs. So I've just got a fork here. It doesn't even have to be whisked. Just, just bring them together. So our wet ingredients, our eggs, our coconut oil to add a little bit more moisture in there and good fats, and our buttermilk, and then our blitzed dates. So we've got our buttermilk there. So we've got our gorgeous, really plump, now hydrated dates. I'm just going to pop them into the food processor just to speed this process up a little bit and prevent me getting super sticky hands. So you could just chop them with a knife, that's fine. Make sure that they're pitted and if you're unsure, you can sort of go through them and, and remove any extra tough husky bits. So we're just gonna blitz this into a, a fine dice and then we're gonna pop it in. This is one of those recipes that even my gluten-loving, sugar-loving friends can get behind because it is just that satisfying. So we've got our other wet ingredients. Just a reminder, we've got our egg. We have got our buttermilk. We've got our coconut oil. So we're going to bring this all together before we add our choc chips because otherwise it's gonna be just too hard to mix. So this way we can make sure we get a nice, thorough combination before we add the chunky chips. So we're going to pop that into the oven at 180 for about half an hour. And while that's cooking, we can prepare our sauce. Our sticky date and chocolate pudding has a couple minutes left, which is just the right amount of time for us to create our caramel sauce using coconut milk. I'm gonna put that straight into the saucepan and we've got some more dates and we've got some vanilla paste. You could use fresh vanilla bean, whatever you have access to. So we'll just bring that up to a medium simmer. So nice little gentle rolling bubbles in there. And that should be enough heat to soften the dates and then we'll use a stick blender to smooth it all out. If you want a really smooth caramel, you can pass it through a sieve, but I'm gonna be happy to use it just as is. Now, because this is hot, just be extra careful. So if you need to move it a little bit away from your body, and I wouldn't recommend pulling it up and out very often. So if you wanted to, you could add some xanthan gum and make it sort of a, a, a more, uh, a thicker consistency if you wanted to, or a more jelly-like jammy consistency. But because we're gonna let this ooze and just relax into our pudding, I'm quite happy with that. And then it'll thicken a little bit on cooling if you want some extra for presentation. So we'll bring our pudding over. 
We're gonna poke lots of little holes in so that we can let all of that caramel sauce seep into our pudding. So we've let our sauce soak in for a few minutes there. I've kept some aside so that we can have a little bit more at the table. I'm going to take a nice big scoop out of this. Nice and juicy all the way through, soft and gooey. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit more of our caramel date sauce over the top. Now if you really wanted to, you could serve it with ice cream or, or cream, but a bit of a, a pull of this sauce will do me just fine. And even though this is a dessert, it's kind of good for you, so might be my midday snack. 